What's up guys? Welcome back to another week of Fellow Drops Brew Demos. I'm Haley. I'm going to brew for you today. Brian is behind the camera um, and we're super stoked to bring this pretty jammy natural from Anchorhead Coffee. It's uh, an Ethiopia Hembella. Um, natural funkiness, uh, super round, like pretty darn good. Um, this week you'll notice that it's not one and one of me, but one of me and two brew methods. Um, we've noticed so many comments uh, asking about XF, asking about the differences between brewing with X and XF, and sometimes brewing with more coffee can be harder to get control of it, to get the extraction that you want. So I'm going to talk to you that today, the differences in brewing and what you want to keep the same, um, and why, because the why is super important, right? So first I'm going to start off with Stag X with my Mighty Brewing Kit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pre-warm, as we always do, pull out that papery taste. You don't want any of that in your final product. And also pre-warm your dripper and vessel. And remember, you might want to use a lot of water to pre-warm your Stag X dripper because it is double-walled insulated stainless steel. Um, again, I've said it before, but I'm going to say it again. Um, it, takes a, it takes a little longer than uh, some other single wall drippers would take to warm up, but once it's warm, it really retains its heat, which is pretty invaluable in extraction, right? So, once you are all, once all the water drips through, you want to make sure that you're going to dump out your water um, before brewing, because nobody likes diluted coffee. I'm just walking away. <laughs> nobody likes diluted coffee. I mean, some people probably do, which, my apologies. To each their own, right? But not here. Cool. So I am going to weigh out. I'm going to use a 15 to 1 ratio as opposed to our standard 16-ish to 1. I'm going to weigh out 23 grams of coffee for Stag X. I'm doing this because while this coffee pushes the limits of light roast and it almost goes into like a true medium, it's definitely still in the light roast spectrum. And so I wanna, I wanna push that jamminess, that sweetness, that uh, roundness out. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna bump up the, bump up the ratio a tad bit. Really give it just that little extra oomph of, of jamminess and punchiness. Rides the line between light and medium roast super, super evenly, I believe. Um, so I'm gonna grind with a medium setting. Um, again, that is four on Ode with SSP three to three and one, uh, which is a little bit fine, uh, like medium fine-ish um, on Ode with standard burrs. So I'm gonna go grind this, I'll be back. Now that we've got that sorted, again, your medium fine grind, right? So pretty, pretty true to medium fine form uh, because we're gonna extract the heck out of this without over extracting. All right, so vessel's pre-warmed, dripper is also pre-warmed. Let's get the bloom started. I am brewing at 205 degrees. Again, this coffee rides the line between light and medium roast, and I don't want to risk over extracting by brewing at hotter temperatures, so we're gonna, we're gonna stick to that 205. All right. So since I used 23 grams of coffee, I'm gonna about double that in my bloom just to make sure I'm getting everything soaked nice and easily. If you go a little bit over, so you, you know, 23 times two is 46, I'm really bad at math. Um, <laughs> so, you know, if you go up to 50, I went up to 52, not a huge deal. Um, but try not to over, over pour because then you run the risk of uh, just a, a bunch of different stuff over agitation, um, just uh, running the risk of over extraction kind of right off the bat. Um, I'm going to let it bloom close to 40 seconds just to get oh, all of that natural jamminess out. And really, really, yeah, really just pushing that, really just pushing that roundness, that jammy body uh, out as much as I can. And just kind of want to monitor, sniff the coffee halfway through the process. It is giving almost also like a marzipan, at least on the nose. So interesting. Super stoked to have this from Anchorhead. Um, 
super stoked for this natural. All right, we are on the second pour. First pour was up to 150, remember. Now I'm going to my second pour, which is 250 even concentric circles in and out to make sure that you're not paying attention to or focusing on one area more than others. And again, uh, with stag X, we want to remember that, well, stag X and XF, since they're, uh, both of their sidewalls are so tall and narrow, um, and since their filter is wavy, it makes it really difficult to channel with these drippers. Um, really, really difficult. So you really want to get all the way out to the edge, get into those ridges, pour over uh, as if you're pre-warming your filter almost um, as you're, you know, as you're going in your, in your concentric circles in and out because you want to get that coffee that's just hanging out, trying to hide on the, on the sidelines. You know, it's, no one gets to hang out and sit on the wall. Everyone's got to dance kind of thing. Yeah. All right. And last pour, getting all the way out to those sidewalls, making sure that I have no coffee is left behind. And we're gonna let that drip out. And while this is dripping, I'm gonna go ahead and pull a barista move and multitask. So taking my setup, trying really hard not to jostle too much and not to um, over, like, add any extra agitation, I'm going to gently move it in front of my Akaya scale. And I'm gonna go ahead and start weighing out coffee for XF. Um, sweet, so we'll pre-warm XF, pre-warm the vessel. I'm gonna go get some more water for my kettle as well. Looking at, uh, <laughs> behind the scene, pay, attention, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain filling from a hot water tower, right? Um, if you guys are lucky enough to have a Curtis industrial hot water tower in your house, definitely use it. It's pretty, it's a uh, living in, in coffee luxury, right? <laughs> um, the lap of coffee luxury. All right, so I'm gonna pre-warm the same as I would my X dripper, no differences here. Um, also monitoring the brew time for my X, Stag X brew. All right. Sweet, so this is pre-warming. Stag X brew is gonna come out right at about four minutes. Uh, which is just about there. Um, four XF versus X. All right, four minutes, 12 seconds. A little bit long, but I think a natural Ethiopia has the room for that. Um, so differences between stag X and XF. The natural inclination with XF, because it is a two cup essentially, you know, it's mostly, mostly meant for brewing two cups at a time. Um, the natural inclination is to double the amount of coffee that you would use for X into XF. However, that doesn't stay true to ratio, which ratio, sorry, I keep sniffling. This is, <laughs> okay, allergies. Um, I'll just go back a little bit. So, the natural inclination is with going from stag X to brewing with stag XF is to want to double the amount of coffee, the, the, um, the dry dose that you use in, in going from X to XF. But that doesn't stay true to ratio. And ratio here is what's key versus um, you know, doubling math or whatever. So instead of using 46 grams, which would put me at a pretty tight ratio somewhere, I'm somewhere I think in like the 13 to one territory. I'm going to actually calculate based off of ratio. I'm going to use a 15 to one ratio with this bigger dripper and I'm going to use 600 grams of water. That's to the ratio aid lines on the outside of the stag carafe. We've got these two dots right here. That is denoting 600 grams of water, just about. So I use 600 grams of water, um, 40 grams of coffee in, staying to that 15 to one. Another thing to take into consideration when you're brewing with XF versus X, is that they're virtually, they're very, they're very similar drippers um, in that the diameter is the same. However, XF is much deeper than X is, right? So your water is gonna have to travel through a bed of grounds that's roughly twice the height with the same diameter, right? 
Meaning you're probably going to want to pull back a little bit on the grind setting, not super significantly, but you're going to make it a little bit coarser to account for that added um, surface area, right? So that it doesn't take twice as long for the water to pass through um, as it did with X. So that's what I do. That's what I think about when I'm brewing with uh, XF versus X. I don't do the, I don't, I don't double the amount of coffee that I use. I use ratio and calculate it that way. Um, and I also coarsen up the grind setting, not too significantly, don't go too crazy, but um, significant enough for the water to notice and pass through a little bit more quickly than um, it would if you kept it at the same grind setting as X. So with X, I used four on our Ode with, with SSPs. For XF, I'm probably gonna use four and two clicks, so one click under five. Um, for, o, for XF, Ode standard burrs, probably you're somewhere in the four range. Um, and this is more of, this is less of a medium fine and more towards a medium, medium coarse-ish um, grind setting. So that being said, true to ratio, I'm going to weigh out 40 grams of coffee. Again, 600 grams of water out. And I'm gonna brew at 205 again. I'm not changing that, not changing that temperature. Man, this is a lot of coffee. Rarely ever do I brew many cups at a time. I'm usually just, there's so much. So now that we're all ground up and I had to go back and actually grind a little bit more because I was messing around um, with some behind the scenes Instagram stuff with Brian and 100% spilled a bunch of the grounds directly on my shirt, to which I said, fellow drops, am I right? <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it's not what we meant, but you know, it, it's close enough, close enough to the original meaning, right? Um, fellow drops what? Coffee, it turns out. Okay, so Dad jokes aside, we're gonna brew with XF. Um, one thing I also love about XF is the double walled uh, glass, like hand blown glass carafe that it comes with. And it also comes with, not pictured here, a silicone lid. Um, so if you wanna brew two cups for yourself, you wanna keep the other one warm, it really does hold its heat pretty well. Um, you just, you know, pour yourself a cup, slap the silicone lid on, and then come back to it later uh, in like, you know, 20, 30 minutes, and it's still delicious and ready to go for you. All right, so. I'm going to dump out that excess water because again, we don't really like diluted coffee here as far as drip goes, you know what, to each their own, but I'm gonna dump this excess out. All right, so we're gonna dump out our, our 40 grams of coffee to keep to that ratio, right? That 15 to one. Um, and we're not doubling the amount of coffee from Stag X to Stag XF. I have 205 degree water ready to go. I'm gonna start that timer after I've leveled out my bed of grounds and roughly double, so around 80 grams is what I'm pouring up to on the bloom here. 83, 82, I'll take it, that's totally fine. All right. Yeah, I did a scientific experiment with uh, our stag carafe a couple of weeks ago because I was curious as to how long it held its temperature for. Um, after the first 10 minutes, it dropped pretty, it dropped about 10 degrees in temperature. And then for the rest of the time with the silicone lid on, it pretty stayed pretty steady for the next 30, 40 minutes. All right, at 40, gra uh, 40 grams, at 40 seconds, I am breaking bloom. And I'm going to pour all the way up to 250, since I'm going to 600. I'll do 250 and then I'm gonna go 450 and then the last pour is gonna be 600. So the last pour is gonna be a little bit shorter um, than the first two. But as long as you're pouring even concentric circles, um, in this case, it shouldn't be too much of, of, of any detriment to your final brew. And you'll see water should be passing through at roughly the same rate it was for you on Stag X um, since we coarsened up the grind a little bit negate the offset of having thicker bed of grounds than stag X. Sweet, so second pour, we're going up to 450. I don't know why I said that so slowly, but here we are. 450. I'll show myself out, it's fine. All right. 
We're gonna top off some water too, because man, Stagex uses a lot of water. What caught me at the hot water tower again? Don't tell anyone. Um, so yeah, this last pour is gonna be approximately 150 grams up to, um, up to 600 instead of a 200 gram pour. So you're taking back about 50 grams um, on the pour, but again, shouldn't be of too much detriment um, to your final brew. All right, so I'm ready. Not letting the slurry get dry, but not pouring too, too quickly, making sure that it gets low enough um, so you have enough room to pour. And I'm going to pour 150 grams up to 600 smackaroos. No, that's, I don't know what that is. Maybe don't listen to me. Maybe, maybe we don't listen to Haley. All right, 601 grams. I will accept it. That is absolutely acceptable. And we're going to wait for it to drip. And then we have a, an X and an XF brew. The intent here is for both of these to have extracted similarly enough because they're, I mean, they're both, they're essentially the same drippers. One is just smaller than the other, right? You want to be able to get control of XF so you have the control that you would have with X with XF. So I'm looking for similarly structured flavor profiles in the coffee. I'm looking for the pretty much the same flavor notes to jump out with both. Um, and that's how I'll know that it's, I have successfully controlled and mastered the XF. Pretty close to time. This is also, also telling me that we, this is also telling me that the grind setting change is probably successful because if you remember, our Stag X brew came out at about four minutes, 12 seconds. This one came out at four minutes, 10. I should have actually let the timer go a little bit longer. So it was about four minutes, 11. Um, so finishing right on time. Cups. All right. I got two small cups. I'm going to pour, oops, one of each, just a little bit. I want it to cool down pretty quickly so I can taste it right away. So. I'll start with Stag X in the natural order of things. It's probably also cooler than Stag XF because we just brewed Stag XF. Um, let's get a slurp. Mm hmm. Just big cherry energy. Um, <laughs> for sure, like cherry, a little bit of like a, like a bright and present acidity um, that's bright and present for sure, but it's not like right up in the forefront, um, right in the, in, in the, in the beginning of things. Um, it's pretty round natural. And again, like it's the, my, the taste, the flavor is still lingering in my mouth as I talk to you now. Let's see if there's a big difference in mouthfeel or flavor FX uh, in XF. It's also much hotter. <laughs> Hmm. So as it cools, it does take on a little bit more of a, there's like a lemony vibe as, uh, as it cools down, but mouthfeel pretty similar. It's still, they're both very round. The only way that I'm discerning these two coffees right now is one is cooler than the other. So one has taken on a little bit more and probably opened up a little bit more, but try it for yourself. Let us know what you think in the comments. Uh, like I said, this was a suggestion that we took from y'all. So we definitely are taking suggestions. We're always, we always welcome them because honestly, we're doing this, we're doing this for you guys. We're, we're here to brew for you. Uh, so let us know what you want to see in the comment section. Um, as always, it's super easy to order from fellow drops. Coffee is as delicious as this Anchorhead Ethiopia Hembella. All you have to do is text us back uh, the amount of bags that you would like when we send you a text and then we send you coffee. That's it. Um, Thanks so much, guys, again. I've been and will continue to be Haley from Fellow and Fellow Drops uh, sh brewing with you. Uh, we'll see you next time. Oh, and be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, click that little button wherever it is. That'd be great. Thanks very much, guys. We'll see you next time.